A committee on banking, housing, and urban affairs comes to order. In a little over a year since President Biden took the oath of office, we've seen the American economy come roaring back. We've added 6.6 .6 million new jobs, a record for any president's first year in office. For the first time in two decades, our economy grew faster than China's economy. We've made tremendous economic progress. The nominees who we would like to vote on today are crucial to continuing that progress. Sandra Thompson to be director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency and five Federal Reserve nominees. Jay Powell is the chair. Leo Brainerd and Sarah Bloom Raskin as vice chairs. Uh, Lisa Cook and Philip Jefferson. But instead of showing up to work to do their jobs, Republicans have walked out on the American people. My Republican colleagues claim it's because they haven't gotten the information they've requested from one of the nominees. Let me be clear, Ms. Broom Raskin has been the subject of an unrelenting smear campaign in fear-mongering by the, re by the ranking member and Republicans, something that's become all too common. They've distorted her words. They've painted her as some sort of radical. As we've heard during her nomination hearing, in her own words, Ms. Bloom Raskin is a mainstream economic thinker, been confirmed twice by unanimous votes in this Senate. She's not in the business of telling banks whom to lend to. Her views on climate are not extreme. They are about accounting for risks that 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 threaten our financial system wherever we may find them. As she said over and over again, this is about economic and financial system resilience. The attacks on Ms. Bloom Raskin haven't stopped there. They've become more personal. They can't attack her on substance. She's so qualified. So they've engaged in malicious character assassination, assassination and innuendo without offering real evidence. Through this entire process from day one, she's been, been transparent. She's gone to great lengths to respond quickly to the committee, including providing the committee with paper, all the paperwork, meeting with committee staff of both parties prior to her nomination, uh, respond, promptly responding to the committee's request for additional information. After her nomination, she received 180 questions, QFRs, questions for the record, the most of any nominee in recent history. She answered those 180 questions in 48 hours, and then a, another Republican center sent, center sent her more questions, which she also dutifully answered. She expressed, the ranking member expressed concerns with Ms. Blooms Raskin's response to a submitted questions. I agreed starting Thursday night or starting Friday morning. I talked to the ranking member Thursday night to review her responses with my staff. After reviewing her responses, I do not share the ranking member's concerns. She answered every single question. Now Republicans have fled the room, hiding rather than voting on a fair and experienced nominee. Sarah Bloom Raskin has been confirmed, as I said, twice by this Senate unanimously. Nothing about her or her approach to this job has changed. Cam Fine, former head of the Community Bankers, nationally said yesterday a few lawmakers appear not to believe Rankin's assurance, assurances that she won't meddle directly in affairs at financial institutions, but I do believe her, and so do my fellow bankers. After all, if she had any information to tell bankers what to do, she surely would have done so when she was at the Fed or Treasure before. She didn't because she knows and understands the role of a bank regulator. All five Fed nominees have run the gauntlet. They've offered to meet with senators on and off this committee, Republicans and Democrats. They've gone through hear hearings. They've answered dozens and dozens of questions for the record. They've received an unprecedented amount of support, a thousand individuals and groups and still counting from across the political spectrum, banking industry, state regulators, economists, former government officials, consumer groups, civil rights advocates, and more and more and more. At this pivotal moment in our economy, everyone needs to understand we need a, we understands we need a full reserve board. This will be the first time in almost a decade where we have all seven members of the Federal Reserve Board as they step up for the importance of the meeting that's going to happen in March. The lawyers in this body know the old adage, when you have the law on your side, pound the law, and you have the facts on your side, pound the facts, when you have neither, pound the table. Ranking member Toomey and my Republican colleagues have nothing on their side on this issue, so they pound the table. 
After agreeing three weeks ago upon dates for both a hearing and a markup, they're now objecting to voting on a nominee because they don't like the answers she provided. It's just a delay tactic. We know where they stand. Mitch McConnell said on the Senate floor today, um, asking President Biden to withdraw the nomination of a twice confirmed regulatory expert who has the broad support of banks, state regulators, consumer advocates, and so many others. I point out that she was a banking regulator in Senator Van Hollen's state. He's known her for years, as has his colleague in the Senate. Senators from both sides of the aisle speak about their concerns about inflation, how this nation will emerge from this global pandemic. Few things we can do as senators will do more to help address our nation's economic concerns than to confirm this slate of nominees, the most diverse by far and most qualified slate of nominees ever put forward. It's time for actions to match words. I urge my Republican colleagues to return to the table to vote their conscience. Let them vote no if that's what they believe, but make them vote and let the Senate fulfill its solemn duties. I will, I will delay votes on these nominees. We will update you when all when we've rescheduled. Um, so far, I'm still hopeful in the next couple of minutes that a Republican shows up and we can move forward. Uh, any other members wish to speak? Senator Tester. Our constituents sent us here to vote. Nobody's on the other side. I hear on the floor every day Republicans get up and talk about inflation. And by the way, inflation is very important and we need to get our arms around it. But what group is out there to deal with market forces any better than the Fed? There is none. Yet they don't show up to vote. I think we should have the vote today regardless, just to prove to the constituents of these folks' estates that they didn't, they're not showing up. They're not showing up to do their constitutional duty that they were elected to do. And what is further rich in this situation is the number of nominees that came before us in the previous administration that were not qualified, but they showed up to vote for them. What else? Senator Van Hollen? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as, as you mentioned, um, Sarah Bloom Raskin is a, a Marylander. I've known her for a long time. Uh, she did serve uh, with distinction as Maryland's top bank regulator uh, during a very difficult time, during the financial meltdown 2007, 2008. Uh, she had sort of unanimous support uh, from uh, our banking community, especially from community banks, and we heard from all of them uh, as part of this nomination. Uh, she has been twice confirmed unanimously by the United States Senate for important positions, Deputy Secretary of the Treasury and a member of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. And yet today, uh, people who voted for her for very important positions in the past are not here. It's AWOL. Uh, despite the fact that the Federal Reserve makes very important economic decisions for our country, our colleagues claim that they are concerned about uh, inflation, and yet not one of them is here. Uh, I would just uh, close, Mr. Chairman, by pointing out that uh, about a year ago, we had a very important vote in the Senate for our economy. It was on the American Rescue Plan. The American Rescue Plan has helped boost jobs in our country, record levels, boost economic growth to the highest level in two decades, and has reduced unemployment way below what had been projected before the American Rescue Plan. Not one of our colleagues supported that American Rescue Plan that has done so much to help our economy, and now it's a sad reflection of the state of affairs that they're AWOL when it comes to this very important vote. And I want people to stop uh, attacking uh, Sarah Bloom Raskin uh, on you can have legitimate differences, and as you said, go ahead and vote, yes or no. But don't refuse to show up at this very important time for very important nominations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Hall. Senator Menendez. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to echo one or two remarks, if our Republican colleagues were as concerned about inflation as they claim to be, and as certainly we are, then they would come to the markup and make sure that the Fed has the personnel to ultimately have the monetary policy that can rein in inflation and help families save money. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to basically say uh, fire, fire, 
and then stop hiring the personnel that can put the fire out. Pretty amazing. And, and just by way of example, if you don't want to vote for any one of these nominees, then come and vote no. Last year, the Congress considered Judy Shelton uh, someone who had publicly cast doubt on whether or not we should have deposit insurance. Deposit insurance is that thing that ultimately ensures that everybody who has a little bank account, if the, if the bank goes belly up, that you don't lose your life savings. That was the type of nominee we had. Democrats didn't agree with her and her views, but they didn't stop the committee on voting on her. They came here and unanimously voted against her. But the process continued. And so at the end of the day, you know, it is just uh, so alarming that we have come to the point in which our colleagues will use any attempt to stop the process, whether it's in committee, to stop the process on the floor, to just grind the wheels of government to a halt as a political tactic. And that political tactic, uh, at the end of the day, only hurts the American people. We should be voting on these nominees, particularly to the Fed, so that we can ultimately have a full Fed board that can make the monetary policy decisions that can improve the lives of Americans and rein in inflation. And their absence here today speaks, uh, you know, uh, loudly about uh, the hypocrisy of saying we care about inflation, yet you won't allow those very entities that can make a difference uh, to move forward. Thanks. Senator Warren. <clears throat> Senator Warner. Mr. Chairman, um, I apologize. I'm going to have to leave in a moment for a Senate Intel Committee hearing, which I'll chair. Um, I'm disappointed with my Republican friends. I remember I made upset a lot of members on this side of the the aisle when I voted for, for example, one of the president's, the pre previous president's nominees for the Fed board. Um, I would have wished that they would have given the same courtesy to these nominees for the Biden administration. If they chose to vote, vote against them, I may disagree, but as Senator Tester said, that's their job. Um, we should be able to agree or disagree, and I want to echo what Senator Van Hollen said. Um, Bankers in Virginia have contacted me on behalf of Sarah Bloom Raskin. Um, so many of them have been supportive. So I'm disappointed by today. I hope this, this committee, we've had spirited debates over the years. Um, the chairman and I have disagreed on issues on uh, times over the years, but we've always showed up and done our job. And I hope this is a, a, a one momentary exception and not uh, a rule of what have otherwise been a I think a very well-functioning committee. Thanks. And as you point out, Senator Menendez said, Judy Shelton, we all opposed. I didn't use my position on this committee to try to get you all to boycott this hearing, even though that markup, even though none of us thought she was qualified. Uh, Senator, Senator, can we just go ahead and vote? I realize it won't be enough to push her out of committee, but a statement that the rest of us are here, we are prepared to vote, and to go on record to say we support this nominee and we're ready to take it forward. There's no reason we can't just do that. We, we, can't, we can't go into executive session and take a position. I think we could all say how we would vote. Is that, is that the same thing? Why don't we just, uh, let's just go around the room. Let's just call, call this, it's an unofficial, but call the roll if you would. And can we do that, Mr. Chairman, on block? So that we well, he's still rolling fast, too. Can you can take 60 seconds? Okay. On the, on the, on the nomination of... Oh. While we're doing, do you want to do do it on block on, on block all five? Let's okay. Let on, on the nominations on block of the six people who were who were um, noticed today. Yes, okay. Mr. Oh, Chairman. Uh, aye. Mr. Reed. Aye. Mr. Menendez. Aye. Mr. Tester. Aye. Mr. Warner. Aye. Miss Warren. Aye. Mr. Van Hollen. Aye. Miss Cortez Basto. Aye. Miss Smith. Ms. Cinema. Aye. Mr. Ossoff. Aye. Mr. Warnock. Aye. Mr. Toomey. I was. No. Thank you. Uh, well, Mr. Well. Toomey. Oh, do you want me to keep going? Okay. Mr. Toomey, Mr. Shelby, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Scott, Mr. Rounds, Mr. Tillis, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Haggerty, Ms. Lummis, Mr. Moran, 
Mr. Kramer, Mr. Daines. Mr. Trevor, let us call to zero. Thank you. As, um, as heard, all 12 Democrats supported all six nominees. Um, all 12 Republicans were absent. I, I wish the report Warren wants to. Uh, Senator Warren wants to be too, No, I assume when Chair Powell, correct? Okay. Uh, anybody else want to speak? Say a few words. Ka Catherine, you wanted to say something. Senator Cortez Masto. Uh, let me just associate myself with the uh, comments of my colleagues. Let me say a, a couple of things. Um, I, I hear every day uh, the impact of, of, of high prices in my state from everyone. And uh, we have tools to address that, uh, monetary tools that are essential to addressing the high prices uh, and inflation. Uh, and, and one of those uh, is the Federal uh, Board of Governors here. And it is so important that we have a functioning board, that we have people on it. Uh, I do not understand why my Republican colleagues are not there. We just came from a hearing this morning on cryptocurrency. I, I can't tell you how many Republicans I heard from that said it's great we're working in a bipartisan way, that we're working together on these issues. And now they're here preventing us from addressing an issue that is impacting every single one of our families and individuals in our state, which is the high prices and inflation. Uh, a couple of the other things. Um, they can be here to vote no. We all we are trying to do is move them out of committee. They can still get the QFRs go through those and make a decision on their votes on the floor of the Senate. Right now, we are just trying to move them out of committee uh, and moving forward so that the American public can see that we are still uh, really focused on the needs of this country. And so I'm disappointed that they're not here. Uh, and uh, I am hopeful that they will reassess uh, at the end of the day and come to the table and work with us to address uh, and make sure we have a functioning reserve. Thank you, Sir Cortez Master. Anyone else want to speak? Thank you all. Committee is adjourned. Thanks, Brown. Thanks, John.